everybody and welcome back. Is the future of beauty all wrapped up in a bar? It's a good question, right? Because you will notice a sudden influx of beauty bars. And by that, I mean moisturizing bars, cleansing bars, shampoo bars, conditioning bars for face, hair and body. And I wanted to do a little bit of a dive into the difference between a beauty bar and a soap. They are fundamentally different. Back in the day, I remember being taken around Unilever's headquarters and they showed me how they created Dove's first ever solid cleansing cream bar. And it was fundamentally different. The process of creating a soap is called saponification. And it's a mixture of normally back in the day an animal fat, but quite often a vegetable fat. And then they add an alkaline to it and they add various different things to it, you know, fragrance and color and stuff like that in a process called saponification to get that hard, waterless lump. And as a result, the alkaline left the bar alkalinic, which meant that when you cleansed yourself, I mean, we all did it when we were growing up, right? Or did we? Maybe if you're only my age, did you do it? Probably if you are over 35, you've all used a soap. Maybe if you are younger, you've only used shower gels, which are um, a more liquid form. They can contain a soap in them, a detergent in them, but generally they're pH balanced. Anyway, what happened was you would cleanse yourself, your skin would feel dry and tight and slightly irritated. And then over time, your skin would then produce more sebum because after you've stripped the sebum, the skin feels uncomfortable, it's alkalinic. It can't actually in that state fend off things like bacteria and irritations and stuff like that. So it produces sebum, the sebum is acidic and the skin rebalances itself out. The skin is a very clever thing. However, um, beauty companies realized Dove were primarily the first one to realize that that's not a good thing. You know, you need a, an alternative. So what they did was they created a super fatted solid cleansing bar that was pH balanced. And to this day, I still absolutely love Dove. I've talked about it before. Now, soaps, solid cleansing bars are so old fashioned, they've come back in fashion, mainly driven by companies like Lush, who are appealing to a younger audience and saying, look, why are we buying shampoos that are essentially diluted and conditioners, moisturizers that are essentially water based when a we don't need all that water. If we can get the concentrated active ingredients into a bar, they are beauty bars. Lush were the first people to do it and then the, the body shop came along and they've basically fought hard and with moral high ground on their side to say that beauty bars are ecologically better for the environment and they are but are they better for your skin hair and body that's the question. So I'm going to look at some new companies that are relatively new companies that are launching um, beauty bars and the first thing they all say is we are not a soap. Don't call us a soap, just because we look like a soap, we're not a soap. So they're not made by the process of saponification. They're normally created via something called melt and pour. And melt and pour is something that home, a lot of home soap makers will know because, or a lot of home solid cleansing bar makers will know because it's something that can be done relatively easily, but on a smaller scale. It was something that was traditionally mastered by artisanal companies and now it's trying desperately to go mainstream. And I'm going to start off by saying Dove still make their solid cleansing bars. And now you've got things like Garnier doing ultimate blends. I mentioned them in my Can You Be A Beauty Addict and Be Green video. And these are the shampoo bars from Garnier Ultimate Blends. And there's two here. There's Scout for Fragile Hair and then there's one for Normal Hair. As it clearly says, zero plastic waste. Now, what I would like all of these bars to do is to give a clear pH measurement on them and they don't and it sort of drives me mad and this is why it's important. I mentioned that soaps are by their nature, by their chemical nature, created using an alkaline and therefore they're alkalinic. That's important because your skin needs to rebalance itself to become acidic because a healthy skin is always slightly acidic. And that is a process that's slightly stressful for the skin and can produce actually cause actually the overproduction of sebum. But your skin has the ability to do that. Your hair doesn't. 
Now, why is it important that your hair is slightly acidic um, if, for example, your hair is dead because your hair is dead? And the importance is that your scalp needs to be obviously very slightly acidic because your scalp is skin, but your hair also needs to be acidic for very good reason. This was kindly explained to me by a trichologist that I've known for quite a long time called Tony Malidi, who has a range out called Earthkind, and I'm gonna show you them here. There are conditioning and shampoo bars, not soaps. Remember that. If they are labelled as a soap, they're made using saponification. These are shampoo and conditioning bars created via melt and pour technology, and they are pH balanced. They are slightly acidic. That's important for your scalp because your scalp is skin, obviously, and you don't want to encourage it to produce more sebum. It will make your scalp oily. But also, more importantly, your hair needs to be acidic, and Tony kindly explained this to me. And I've got a little drop-in picture here because if your hair is alkalinic and is disrupted by harsh cleansers, then the cuticles that protect it and keep it smooth and soft and shiny and in good condition and from splitting and all those things, they lift. And if they lift, the only way that they can become more acidic is either for the sebum to come all the way down or for a conditioner to rebalance out a harsh cleanser. So it's important that every single one of your shampoos and your conditioners are also slightly acidic. So why aren't any of these bars listed with a pH on it? pH stands for potential for hydrogen, by the way, um, but it's actually just a measurement of the acid alkaline balance in that product. And I just don't understand why a company would make a solid bar, a beauty bar, and not list its pH on it because the people that are buying these are pretty sussed. They care about the environment, they care about their carbon footprint, they care about not having plastic and waste and diminishing landfill and all that stuff. So they're pretty sussed. And I think they would know that they want a cleansing bar or a conditioning bar that respects their skin as much as it does the environment. Now, this is an interesting one. What you can do is you can buy litmus paper from a chemist. That's litmus paper. And you can test the pH of these. It's very easy. You essentially get the bar wet and then you put the paper on and the paper will have a different color range on it and the color can then be matched to the, the pH, the acidity or the alkalinity. It's very interesting, it's what they use for measuring your wee. <laughs> if you've ever had to have that for whatever reason, mainly because, maybe because you've got a urine infection or something like that. Anyway, if you want to be a, do a little bit of sort of at home science, you can go and buy some litmus paper, buy a litmus paper test from a chemist, from a pharmacist, and they'll give you all the little strips and then they'll give you a little chart and I'll drop in pictures of the chart here. And you can go away and test your own uh, solid cleansing bars, conditioning bars and shampoo bars. I'd be interested to see what you find out. Anyway, let's talk about what's available on the market. I've spoken about Garnier. They're the two most um, available on the high street. And I have to say they work really, really well. They are not soaps, they are pH balanced and they are very hydrating. Um, they are they tend to be coconut detergent based so instead of putting an alkaline and an animal fat together the melt and pour system is based around detergents and it's based around detergents and then you can add things like humectants emollients conditioning agents to it anti-static agents things like that to it so they're well worth sussing out if you want to reduce your plastic intake let's have a look also at tony's range that's called Earthkind. What's interesting about this is you've got three shampoo bars. So you have dry and coloured hair shampoo, you have an improved scalp health, which has tea tree and eucalyptus in it, and you have uh, for frequent use, which has citrus leaf. But what I think is most interesting about this is it has a conditioning bar as well. And the conditioner is activated by water. If you think about shampoos and conditioners and you turn them over and you look at their inky list, the primary ingredient most often, unless it's lamella technology, is water. So what you're doing is basically thinking about this as being all of the concentration, think of it like an oxo cube as opposed to a gravy. This is like the oxo cube. This is the concentrated stock cube as opposed to what it's like with added water. So you can, what's interesting about it, is make this as concentrated or as weak as you want in terms of putting it on your hair. So you can it doesn't really lather up, it turns into sort of a milky cream. You run it through your hair and then you rinse it out and you can put a little bit of extra bit in the ends. So that's interesting, I think. Again, I think 
What's interesting about this entire movement is more of these are going to come available on the market. You have to decide what you want from your products. I personally would not use essential oils on my scalp or on my face. And a lot of bars, because they're appealing to the eco warrior, they tend to fall into the sort of green, slightly natural field. So by association, they're quite heavily fragranced, something I'm not comfortable with. Um, I don't mind using a fragranced shampoo or a conditioner. I would rather use an unfragranced one, we all know this. But what I wouldn't do is put something with heavy levels of essential oils. I don't mind it on my hair, but I wouldn't necessarily want it on my scalp. I wouldn't want it on my face, that's for sure. So there you go. They are Earthkind and the Garnier Shampoo and Conditioning Bars. The other things I want to show you, by the way, look at Earthkind, they have these really beautiful little aluminium tins as well, because you will need, as Joe Jones once said, what I hate about soaps is, and she meant soaps, but it's true of all solid beauty bars as well, is they go a bit gunky. You've got to keep them dry. You've got to keep them dry. That's on a little shelf so that the water can fall underneath and then you lock the top so you can keep it in your shower. I just think that's really chic. I really like that. Uh, most of the companies have some sort of keep clean, stylish soap dish to go with them. Um, I want to talk about a company called Florena. Now, Florena is a new company that's, that's coming to the UK. It's gone into boots. And I think what's interesting about this is it's part of the Beiersdorf company. So that is uh, Nivea Eucerin. And what's interesting about this is it's based around fermented skincare, but not fermented skincare as in pro and prebiotics. It's got from fermented um, flower extracts in it, but they do have a solid cleansing bar. And it's interesting, what it says on it is sapon no sapon. Sapon is soap, basically, from the word saponification. So it's basically a soapless soap. <laughs> it's a solid cleansing bar. Have a look at this brand if you are interested. They are, again, quite heavily fragranced, but they are, that's, that looks much more like a traditional solid cleansing bar. That's Florena fermented skincare. That means lightly fragranced. So have a look at that range as well. There are two other brands I want to talk about that I think are incredibly chic and deserve our attention, stroke, respect. And the first one is Subtract, not least of all because look at that cool packaging. And Subtract is a new gender neutral skincare brand um, from England, from Britain, and it's solid skincare. So they have really beautiful solid cleansers and they do, Solid cleansers do feel fundamentally different from soaps. They feel more chalky, interestingly enough. And I love the packaging, I really like that. It's, again, you see, I, I get why companies do this because they're not creating them for skin warriors like us, they're creating them for eco warriors. Um, but I do think that the two markets are beginning to overlap. And that's the Subtract Gentle Foaming Cleanser with, ger with geranium, rose and tonka bean. So I love the gentle foaming cleanser in a bar, not a soap, a gentle foaming cleanser, but I just don't want to use essential oils on my face, but I would happily use that on my body. Beautiful packaging. What is interesting though, and I want you to have a look at this, is they do a solid moisturizer as well. And that is really interesting because when you apply this to your skin, what it's like essentially, it's, it's waxes and oils. It's like using a, um, a solid balm, but it's not designed to be rinsed off. So it's like using almost like a, a, a lip balm or a cleansing balm, but it's not designed to be, to be rinsed off at all. It's designed to be left on the skin. And it's actually really nice on your hands. Again, I wouldn't use it on my face. It's loaded with essential oils, but I do think it's a really lovely product really lovely product, beautiful for dehydrated hands and maybe dehydrated arms and legs. You know me, I've got a problem with using essential oils on my face. So they're available from subtract.co.uk and they are new. And as they say, we're not keen on waste. Um, so they literally just come like that in a box, tiny bit of um, almost like grease proof paper inside. And they have really lovely accessories as well. Look at this. Again, nice things to keep your solid cleansing bars, solid moisturizers as intact as possible. The solid moisturizers will just not 
react well to water, but you wouldn't use them in the shower anyway. But the solid cleansers, they will turn to jelly and just disappear because obviously they're designed to be activated by water. So if you get them wet, they'll just continue to dissolve. And I'm gonna finish with Solo. Solo is a new company that has all-in-one hand and body bars. There are four different versions, all-in-one hair, hand and body bars. So they are for literally all over. And I get that they're trying to simplify and minimize the amount of products we're using. They're loaded with essential oils. If you don't mind essential oils on your hair, on your face, on your body, feel free to go and use them. I do think that they are nicely formulated to, to respect your skin in terms of the use of most normally um, cocoa derived based fats and oils. Um, but honestly, hand on heart, I just don't understand why people don't talk about pH on these products. I would want to see on that pH balance. So the pH of skin normally sits around five and a half, six. Sebum is between four and six. And the alkaline soaps are between eight and 10. So your skin has to produce more sebum to rebalance itself. And hair, skin, scalp, body, it should all be slightly acidic. So I don't know why they don't either say pH balanced or say pH 5.6 or pH 6 or so that you can make an informed choice. These products are being purchased by people who I think are aware of the impact of the beauty things they are buying, the beauty products they're buying on the environment. I want them to be equally aware of the effect on their hair, skin and body. Again, if you have no problem with essential oils, go for it. I would happily use them probably on my hair and scalp, probably on my body, but definitely not on my face. Not least of all, because look under this eye at the moment. Periocular dermatitis, deep joy. Not just perioral dermatitis around my nose, which is why I don't like scented skincare on my face. I don't mind cleansers because they're not in contact for very long, but I tend to avoid most really heavily skin, uh, scented skincare. But now I've got periocular. I'm gonna do a video about it. I've got some very, very, very unattractive pictures <laughs> that I desperately tried to, to, to take close up, super high res to send to a dermatologist friend of mine to ask for advice. Anyway, next week's video is gonna be about my battle with both perioral, but more importantly, periocular dermatitis. How the hell did that happen? And more importantly, what did I do to help rebuild the barrier function? At the moment, I've got three large scabs under that eye. You really, if you're watching this on a widescreen high def def definition TV, I can only apologize. It's not attractive. Anyway, this time next week it will have healed and I will go through the journey and I'll tell you exactly what I used in terms of respectful cleansers, respectful skincare. I couldn't get away with not wearing makeup, but also more importantly, any prescription dermatologist advice that I was given as well. That, that's my take on bars. They are beauty bars, they're not soaps, remember that. They're not created via saponification. Most Often they're created via something called melt and pour. They, sadly, all of them are pretty much loaded with quite heavy fragrances and essential oils, but provided they're pH balanced, they're okay for you to use on your skin and hair. But if they won't tell you what their pH is, why not do a sneaky bit of testing? Have any of you gone out, bought some litmus paper, litmus strip, and sneakily tested any of your skincare? Maybe there's a video in that. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll see you soon.